everyone. Welcome to another Behind the Glass live event. Actually, the start of what's going to be three or four live events in a row. But this one is from the UK. The next ones will be from Australia. We are back at the amazing Podium Place with an audience of lovely people. Give yourselves a round of applause. And as we were just discovering and discussing, an audience of, of new Behind the Glass Live attendees. It's exciting when new people come, isn't it, Tony? It is, yeah. And I think we've had this quite a lot this year. New yeah. people coming to the show. Because when we first started, it was like literally the same people coming to every event. Yeah. And we were like, oh, hi again. Yeah, hello. <laughs> and we got to the rate my ride. We we're like, oh, this one's back. Yeah. Um, so it's nice that so many of you have come along uh, that haven't been before. We hope you... Actually, I've just realised maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe now people come and go, I'm not doing that again. That's why we keep getting new people. Yeah. What a disaster. Oh, well, well, fingers, cro yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed you enjoy this and you do come back. Um, we will, of course, kickstart today's episode in the traditional live event format with the rate my ride section and i actually have had a sneaky peek at the photos oh, that's today. Cheating, it is cheating but i just i'm always just a bit intrigued and we did a meet and greet beforehand as we always do with our vips and i found out like everyone came in a jag today not if you agree that like the car box is full of jaguars like i just literally everyone was like oh i'm coming in f pay for oh, i'm coming in f type oh i'm coming in xf oh. like, anyway so let's just launch into it and kick start with something that's definitely not a jag look at this tony that's one of your dream cars, isn't it? I mean, it's almost a Jag. <laughs> I mean, it might as well. The Jag's better than that, but it's the same thing. It's an Aston Martin GT8, a Vantage GT8. Who's bought that? Look at you, sir. That's unbelievable. Now, Tony's favourite expression about my old 360 was that it made a lot of noise and didn't go anywhere. I would maybe claim that this car has a similar vibe. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you mind just passing that microphone back to the very kind owner of this vehicle? Oh, I mean, it always makes me laugh when Sam's derogatory about a car because no. that, that genuinely does mean it's a no, part no, of no, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love this era Vantage. I love the GT12. I don't not love the GT8, but it's like it's about theatre, right? Yeah, it's a very polarizing car, but it's sort of fun. It's okay. fun. Hold, hold the microphone to your mouth, sir, if you, if you don't mind. Do yeah, the, not do to it. your ear. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had it? Uh, well, he's here all his life. No, no. <laughs> Too quick, Tony. So, uh, seven years, but it's my dad's. Seven years? Oh, it's your dad's dad, car. My mate asked me to bring it along. I normally have a GT4, which is a much better driving car. Well, that's what you should have brought. Um, yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, brought that along today. But we've had it for seven years, so since it was new. But your dad's not here? No. Okay, so tell us, Tony, what do you actually think of this? Well, he's, his dad's got more sense than him because he knows he won't get home. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't, I, I've got no interest in Have it. Have you I'm experienced so either GT8 or GT12? Uh, I've been in a GT8, but not a GT12. Okay. I mean, I'm just not interested in Aston Mines, mate. At all? Apart from the Valkyrie. Oh, Let me have man. a go in one of them. You're such a... Uh. Anyway, thank you for bringing it. It will be the loudest thing here, I think. Yeah. And it's cool, you don't see them that often, so... Your mate was right to force you to bring the car. It was very, very cool. If you came in the GT4, we probably would have skipped past you. <laughs> no, we wouldn't have. We'd have told you like you're like God. <laughs> Literally. Um, moving on. Oh, right next to it is a GT4. <laughs> did you bring that as well? <laughs> Who came in the dark oh, blue MGR? Oh, mate. is that your friend? <laughs> so you didn't want to come in matching cars, basically? No, exactly. <laughs> um, manual or PDK? The only question to ask. PDK. Oh, well, good man. Well done. No, but someone went boo. I actually... Who said boo? <laughs> someone booed. <laughs> Yeah, oh, someone in the middle there. Um, I think the GT4 kind of suits PDK. I do like the PDK and well, the GT4. I'm not sure I'd agree there because oh. I, I, the, the, the GT4 is just about fast enough for a manual. So I but think it's okay in a manual. is so long yes. that, you, that it's harder to extract. I think the PDK opens that car up a little bit more. Maybe. My, my car, I enjoy the manual because I'm involved. But the when GT you can get a gear. <laughs> I don't miss the that often. Like stirring a pot. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? It's in there somewhere. I did miss one gear shift on the track day, which is the joke Tony's trying, to, Tony's trying to make, but I left that out of the edit on purpose, so <laughs> no one's laughing along. Um, anyway, it's a very nice car, so thank you for bringing it, and, and good for forcing your mate to bring his dad's car. Um, moving on, we have a Lotus Evora. Hands up. Is this the man I was talking to you before? Yes, please, just part the mic, pass the microphone. Now, I will, I will allow this. Please, sir, I believe you are an automotive YouTuber. I'm... Trying to be. <laughs> Do you want to we'll get a different car then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I've come here to try and convert you, Tony. Uh, well, oh, they said this to me, right? So I was chatting to the phone, they had a lovely chat. We're talking about that. He goes, Our mission today is convert Tony to a Lotus fan. I was like, Oh my God, you've got better chances of I don't know what. But I mean, that is. Give him birth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your worst nightmare, isn't Pretty it? Pretty much, mate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like, without being so I'd rather have the Aston. Yeah. Genuinely. <laughs> <laughs> well, have, have you driven the Navora? Oh, he's, so he's trying now. God, wait, this is going to go wait so badly. Minute. Didn't we, didn't we, was that We did a Vora, we did a few. We did a Vora, which one did we do? We did a special one way back in the day. What was it? There was an... I think you did an Evora 400. I think we did an Evora 400. My first series 1S. And then so I did the GT 410 or the 4... What was it with the 430? No, 410 I took on the big road trip. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what's the difference? We did the 400. His is an S. Right. It's, it's an early car, quite a luxurious, surprising GT car. W- would you like to drive it this afternoon? No, thank you, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather put pins in my eyes. I really like the enthusiasm from you. Good effort. Um, thank you for bringing it. It's a, a lovely colour, I have to say. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, it won't rust, will it? Is it is, is still, a lot is still made out of... Um, Wood? No. <laughs> Flipping hell. What's that? What's that? What's, what are boats made out of? Aluminium. No, no, you're thinking fiberglass. Yeah. Yeah. No? Fiberglass panels? That was the 4C. Because when somebody crashed into it, it just looked like sort of paper had fallen apart. You mean when you hit that van? No, when the van reversed into me. Nice truck. Don't let him do that. Do you? No, he's going to run with that for months. Piled into a van, he did. I did not. I wasn't even there. <laughs> My neighbour can prove to it. He yeah. spoke to the insurance company. Uh, uh, thank you for bringing it. I, I, I quit whilst you're ahead. I can see you're desperate to try and convince him some more, but I would quit while you're ahead. Uh, maybe have a look on Nightfall Drives, YouTube, if you want, Tony. Oh, was um, that the channel? Yeah. Say it again. Nightfall Drives. Nightfall, Nightfall Drives. Drives. Okay, well, that, that was... That was, Yeah, go, go watch some of those videos. Maybe that will convince you. Everyone else should as well. <laughs> um, uh, we've got a very nice BMW M135i. Yeah, the like new, The newest shape, grey yeah. car. HHO is the Who's plate. Who's that? Oh, it's Hello. that idiot. Oh, no. Let's not talk about it. We don't want to talk about his well, that car, do we? It's a company car. It's a company car, yeah, isn't it? That it's one is my company car. Yeah. It's for sale at the moment if anybody wants oh, it. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Come on. Go now, away. We are within our right to give this... He's, uh, we spoke earlier about people who come to every single event. This is, is one of the idiots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you missed out on tickets, blame him. <laughs> So you literally bought this car to advertise it. Is that what you did? Uh, no, it was a bit too damp this morning to bring the U92 M3. Okay, fair I, enough. The E92 M3? Why didn't you just say M3? Why'd you have to say E92? <laughs> this is not a new one, Tony. <laughs> well, just say M3. You'd have been better off. <laughs> well, in fact, you said E92. You've lost all your credit. Hold on, hold on. Even though we're here to mob you up, I will stand up for you a second because I, I would definitely say I have a 992 GT3. But I think you would always just say you have a GT3, right? Yeah, because I, uh, yeah, because I uh, just assume it's the I newest one because you're rich. No, <laughs> As if you're not at the moment. I'm not. I'm about to go skin. <laughs> <laughs> but would you never classify the model, even with a Porsche? No, you wouldn't say I have a 718 GT4. You would just say I have a GT4. No, because I, I haven't got an ego. I don't care. You haven't got an ego. <laughs> no, <laughs> but to be fair. Uh, most of the time, I don't know what the models are, so oh, I was going to say, say I think that's, that's kind of what it is. is. I just have that one. <laughs> well, I do. I do like that car. So even though you're here to just sell that it's advertised that it's the 135 for sale. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, great uh, it's a great car yeah, I was going to yeah. put a price board in it but I left it at home oh we would have kicked you out at that point <laughs> <laughs> um, who's coming the Bentley next to you is that not next to you actually sorry who's coming to the Bentley outside the cafe are they here what I, Bentley is no it? I knew it so this is the problem this happens at Podium every time because the cafe out front is so legit they get the best cars <laughs> well, can all, I have all the worst or? cars come to our event look it's an old 1990s the plate is GRX blue Bentley yeah. No, that's what you come in. No, it's not. It's what my. <laughs> <laughs> he went to school in that car. Yes. My dad's here. Butler's here. <laughs> my dad came for a coffee. Jeeves I'll go and say hi here. to him afterwards. It's actually a beautiful car. You know, I like that era Continental, the big, long, two door coupe Bentley. I bet they cost a bomb. You would never have sold Bentleys, would you? Did no, they, no. Did they ever pass no. through your doors? Continentals, obviously new, the GTs. New shape Continental GTs, the yeah. 2010 cars. Or yeah, 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 yeah. But never uh, this uh, era. I've got a terrible story about one of them. Please. Uh, uh, well, one of them basically blew up on me once. Like the, what, turbo. Like the Luton, fu- L- Luton? <laughs> like the Luton Airport the, fire? The V8 turbocharged one. Right. Blew up. Okay. Cost me 23 grand to fix it. But when you say blew feel up. Feel sorry for me, thank you. <laughs> no one feels sorry for you. You're just yeah. telling everyone how rich you are. No. What, wait, how did it blow up? Well, I don't know, I weren't driving it. What, what do you mean? Please expand. You're well, getting the too tur- little details. The turbos went basically. So okay. it, was a, it was a used car that I sold. It was like a 2016. So it wasn't W12. Apparently they're bulletproof, the W12. 
but the V8s, they were weak. And it was a proper car, it was a one owner car with 30,000 miles, all Bentley service history, lovely, lovely thing. The bloke had it literally two months, it let go. Wow. So I had to pay the what bill. What happens to, so you have to pay it off? Of course, yeah, yeah. Because it's under your warranty. Well, because I'm a proper dealer, basically. That's a disaster. Yeah. How often does that happen? <laughs> not, not that often, thanks, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I sell warranty cars, for, you know, manufacturer cars for that reason. But surely, because a lot of that's under your control, right? You can sell a car thinking it's, because it happened, I know a story with a uh, GT4, that it was sold thinking it was all legit and the gearbox blew up uh, 500 miles down the road. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a hell for you, right? Because you mm. don't see that coming. You're obviously selling the car in good, um, uh, good spirit. No, good, good, uh, good faith. Good faith, thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, that phone call must but have kicked you in the balls. Yeah, and the warranty company that I used to deal with at the time, you wouldn't believe how much they wriggled not to pay. But, but fundamentally, it always lands on the dealer. So I had to pay the money. They must have thought you were trying to scam them, didn't they? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, but mm. yeah. So that's that. Um, okay, moving on. There's a beautiful... Blue 993 with the plate VVU. Who's Hands got that? Up. I think it's another cafe. Oh, at the back. Thank God you came to our event. Um, that's a stunning little car. Now, I think 993s are like, people are going crazy for 993s at the minute. Obviously, the last of the air cooled. All my friends are getting them. The microphone's slowly making its way backwards, right at the back. Um, but I've actually That'll never driven a 993 you. generation. Tell me everything. So is this a, is this a standard car? Is it, what, what do we need to know? Uh, it's an incredibly standard car. Unfortunately, it's an automatic. I'm very sorry about that. But is, so is that a disaster in the 993? Yes. Okay. What did they, <laughs> <laughs> what it, did it, they call it? Is it Tiptronic or it's before Tiptronic? It's Tiptronic. It is Tiptronic. You have to wait a couple of hours or to um, Send it an email. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically. <laughs> it's how, a suggestion if you press one of the buttons. How many gears? All four of them. All four? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you're just taking, like, so you, what does first gear do? Are you like 50 miles an hour in first gear? <laughs> it, it does, actually. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but it's do, great fun. Do you love it despite this? I love it. Yeah, it's great. Okay. There's a, my favourite, uh, there's a button by the gearbox that you press and it just clears all the faults. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Everything so, is fine. Do not worry. Red lights appear. That's genius, actually. So our really good friend, Benny, from the Porsche Museum, who you may have seen in one of our main channel videos that we did, is an absolute hero and is genuinely a funny German, but that's because he's not German. Um, no, he's not German. He's not German. He's German. No. And obviously, you know, he loves Porsche and he gave us this tour of the museum and he's walking around. And I did warn him, I said, look, Tony is the worst person taking the museum. He's not going to care. And bless him, a bit like Lotus Man here. He was just trying to win Tony over. And he'd be like, oh, and then we had the 993. And Tony was like, this was a real disaster, this car. Yeah. <laughs> and at one, Benny at times just was like, yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't, I can't win really. Anyway, but it's very pretty. It's very, very pretty. And I love that you love it, despite its apparent fault. So thank you for bringing you. it. And it's the best moustache I've ever seen. Thank Best moustache. Well. That's amazing. His, I can't see your moustache. I mean, look. Oh, well, well, look at, oh my God. So that's many people thick. looking at me now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that is a chunky moustache. Is that in appropriation or not appropriation? My God. Is that heading towards Movember? Uh, no. Oh, uh, that's a year round thing. Uh, is I've it? had it for a few years. Wow. It's, uh, it's the one month of the year. It's like, oh, we're going to shave you off. No. <laughs> yeah, shave off in November. Yeah, that'll get him thinking. Um, well, thank you for bringing your moustache and the car. Um, <laughs> Grey Julia Quadrifolio. Oh, yes. Oh, welcome back. Thank you again. <laughs> now, we have a fun story about Julia Quadrifolio. Did we already t touch on the one that was on track with us in Red Bull Ring? Oh, yeah. That guy was a lovely guy. Have you tracked your Julia Quadrifolio? Uh, you have done as well. Did you survive? Have you replaced any parts? No, I didn't. Okay. I had a Hold on a sec. Let's get the microphone to you. So I'll ask you again. Have you tracked your Julia Quadrifolio? Yes, I have. How did it go? Uh, it was quite fun. I did have a few warning lights on the dash after it, but it was great fun. Yeah. <laughs> did you go in the wall? I went to Millbrook. No, did, okay. you, go, did you go in the wall? No. Oh. So our friend did. <laughs> we met a lovely guy at the Red Bull Ring, and he was given it large. Like that, That's a quick car on track. I think it would surprise most people yeah. how capable that car is on track, despite the fact it's a big, heavy saloon car. But no, it's basically, not heavy. Well, no, but heavier than a little sports car that you would expect to see on track. Yeah. Um, his brakes were constantly on fire. I don't know how your brakes got on, but every time he came in, he had like a hairdryer to cool off the brakes. Um, and everything was breaking. And he said, oh, you know, it's super annoying because my last track day, well, I wrote the car off and I've had to rebuild it for the last year. And I've come here and it's still falling apart. We're like, oh, good man. <laughs> yeah, um, literally. But yeah, you love that thing, don't you? I you, do, yeah. I've yeah. had it for just over a year now. Well, you bought it when it was brand new, right, to one of our events last year? 
Yeah. yeah, amazing. Well, I'm glad to see it's still around and, as Tony says, not in a wall. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for bringing it back. Uh, beautiful. Ah, oh, this one. The Aventurine Green 992 GTS. Okay, so here we go. Here's an example. I said 992 GTS. If I just said 911 GTS, you would have gone, which one? Wouldn't you? Yeah, but... Yeah, that yeah. 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 Yeah, but hold on a minute. Yeah. That's because we're having a conversation, but, but I'm not, it's not my car. So if, if someone's asking me what car I have, I'll just say the car. Okay. I, I, like I said, I... I and then I, someone's going to go, oh, which generation? Uh, and they're going to have to go, oh, 992. No, I'll just if say... Someone, if I said to you, what car do you have? you went, GT... <laughs> change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> so if I said, what car have you got? GT3. And I went, oh, cool. Like, which one? You're just going to go, well, have you watched the football? So, yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. Do you like F1? <laughs> this is a very unique GTS um, because it's basically debadged and de gts uh, Is the owner willing? Here we go. Uh, if we can get the microphone, I think, the, is the microphone still at the back? No, here we go. Let's, let's pass it. It's coming across to you here. We need to get one of them big sticks, mate. We can just pass I know. it along. But could you imagine you just bonking people on the head <laughs> with it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was the inspiration to de gts your GTS? Um, I think I, I just didn't want to stand out. Um, the, the first time I uh, specced a GTS, I actually specced a bright yellow GTS with a wing. But you didn't want that, to stand no, out. Yeah, that's <laughs> very low key. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I'm 50. I really should be driving around in a bright yellow car with a wing. So I thought I'll go grey, debadged, um, and just keep it keep it nice and subtle. It's very subtle. It's got a lovely interior which looks beige beige-ish. And you said you've even removed the lower suspension, so it's standard it's 911 standard, suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sits a little higher. You think of 10 that? millimeters lower, so it's, uh, it's at the, the correct height. And with the manual gearbox. Manual gearbox, yeah. Seven speed. Uh, yeah. Yes. It was yeah. the most stupid yeah. car I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> great, great fun. I also took the rear seats out. <laughs> he just ignored you entirely. He's just copies great, me. great fun. He just ignored your car. See? Well done, You're sir. very Thank good you. at it. No, good on you. That's yeah, what well well I like to hear. Thank you. You have built the car that you wanted, and I appreciate that. And ignore this man's stupid comments. Oh, because the, the other stupid thing that's inside is the... Um, so the you're ta- stupid. The taco is uh, lime green, and uh, the chronometer is lime green as well. But you don't want to stand out. He wants no. to stand out to himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm sitting in the seat, I can see the lime green uh, taco, and it looks amazing. But no one else can see it. All right. Good, I like that. No, look, bravo you. I'm obviously a big fan of specking 911s for yourself rather than anyone else, because I've got a car no one else would want to buy. Um, moving on. So finally, we get onto my first Jag, given that I pumped up or not saying there was a thousand Jags here. This looks like a new shape. Is this the P450, the VER plate, blue... Right at the front here, so we can slowly make the microphone forward. So this is an all-wheel drive P450. We were obviously having a conversation about the fact that you'd considered a rear-wheel drive, but being the fact that we live in the UK, you didn't want to die every time you left the garage. Exactly. But you love this car, right? Absolutely. I mean, super. That's a car. stunner, mate. Come on, look at that front angle. Yeah. Nice you like color. the new F-types, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And I think they're great value. There are F-type us, new F-type R P575s, like 55 grand now. Yeah. Outrageous-looking things, yeah. but. I can understand the desire for the P450, not the, the big Larry one, but I'm just going to keep telling everyone, keep buying these cars, because they're good Is news. that a V6 one? No, that's a, it's the lesser powered V8, with a chip that you can put up, but it's, oh. it's the, they'll do a rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive P450, or the full all-wheel drive P5005. I've just become that guy in a pub who goes, the, th- the funny thing about the F-Type is... Yeah, 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 yeah I just yeah. bored myself. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it. Beautiful car. Thank, I'm glad thank, you're so happy. Thank you for actually doing a vlog, uh, a video on it as well. Can you please tell Jaguar that so I can get some commission because they keep ignoring my emails. Um, now, there are two GI Yaris's. They're good cars. They are absolutely stunning cars. Matching spec. Have they come together? Obviously. No. No? But oh. you just part together because you were like, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's an unofficial members meeting. <laughs> Do I feel like you see a lot of these on the road? Well, there are you? a lot of them, yeah. There are a lot of them, yeah, aren't there? Yeah, millions. Do you are you like, yeah, sick mate? Like we get it. Like when you who's the other owner, by the way? We've got GST and DGB, DGB on the plates. Is the other owner here? That's oh, podium. No. Oh, it's podium. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but if you like, would you like? Do you have a secret handshake? Are you like <laughs> flash the lights? <laughs> yeah, I flash think, the lights. I think it's a fairly. It seems like a fairly normal machine, and, and you've got to know what it is. Oh, okay. and, and I absolutely love driving it. It's sure. not the fastest thing in the world unless you're on a wet B road. Um, Mega in the wet, that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just love it. Just love the involvement of driving it. But going back to the cult, do you, are you like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. Is there a genuine? Cause yeah. Yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. It's an appreciation. Have you, have you ever waved? So if you go past somebody else in an M3 touring, are you like, 
Mate, I don't wave at my mum. <laughs> I don't wave at anyone. I hate people. No. <clears throat> Yeah, embarrassingly, I do do it. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> do you really? I do. If I see, if I if I was in the three hundred and sixty and I saw another Ferrari, I'd be like, mm, "Really? A morning, sir?" Yeah. Um, and if I'm in a, I do it with all the Porsche people. I even do because, like, this is really this is showing my ego to be bad. If I'm in the GT3 and I see someone like a nine eight seven Boxster, I'm like, "Morning, mate." Because you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're with the, we're the same people. Yeah, well, what you're really thinking is work a bit harder. I've got a GT3. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really what's cat freezing. What, I, what I'm really thinking is why are they not waving back? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of the colour. Uh, beautiful orange SVR with the great play SV12 Fun. That is, I love that. That's amazing. Right at the front here. That is a beautiful car. Now, let's, I'm not, there's nothing negative about your car. I do think the SVRs might be good news moving forward. Now, bear with me before you just jump down my throat. No, I'm not going to. Because the direction Jaguar are about to go in, and it's going to be a very different direction, and supposedly we're not going to see any very new combustion engine vehicles, I think the SVR will be looked back on like... I don't know what, but I, I think it could be the, the, one to, the one to kind of hold its money best out of all the F-types. I'm not telling you it's going to be a 150 grand car, but... I think it's a good. I think it's a good that'd story. Be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I got a garage. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Keep yeah. it safe. Yeah. Yeah. How many miles has it gone on at the moment? Um, just over eleven. So it's oh, hard. mate, stop Brand driving new. it. That's a yeah. bloody you know. That's a barn find and a half. Wow. Eleven miles. No, eleven thousand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was eleven miles. What are you doing? Yeah. Where's yeah, your garage? Close. Around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we're going to come on to eleven miles cars in a moment. But um, anyway, beautiful. I read that. What's the official name of that colour? Um, fire sand. Fire sand. Yeah, that's so a the really launch, nice. The launch color. It's a beautiful yeah. color, I have to say. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those. That's that, that's an absolute winner. Um, <laughs> S15. Do you want us to talk about? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? He's at the back. Uh, Get the mic up to him. He now. I would say they're bronze or gold wheels. Uh, last time we and you called them brown and you said that you're very upset that they're still brown because you were worried the fact that we were going to talk about the fact they're brown. Why are they still brown? Uh, I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> I haven't had Tony ripping into me enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to go home and say, oh, I should definitely paint them black. I still like the brown wheels. I'd call it rust. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> rust to go with the car. It's a cool car, this car. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if you like that sort of thing. Not for me, thank you. I just brought it to wind Tony up. Keep yeah, his blood does. pressure up. Keep him firing all cylinders. Keep me going, yeah. yeah. Save you from getting heart attacks. Datsuns. <laughs> but, 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 but they are good at drifting, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That's what it is On primarily purpose? used for. Yeah, it's Purposeful hard to find drifting. good condition. Okay, yeah, not F12 TDF drifting, which is no. always accidental. Um, well, thank you for bringing it, and thank you for, for keeping the wheels brown or rusty. Um, there is a very nice RS3... Is it green? JB, JBG? Yeah. That's a green one? Yeah, Camry Green. You never told me it was green. Wait, That's what? amazing. Let me see. We go way back. Oh, wow. Way back to Le Mans. Le Mans? Yeah, and beyond that. Were you actually in Paul's video in the end? Uh, I don't think so. No. I didn't watch it. Okay. Well, no one else. <laughs> <laughs> no one else does. So not everyone else. <laughs> I mean, does anyone know who Paul Wallace is now? Jack, please edit that into a reel, please. That is definitely a reel. That's unbelievable. So whilst we were at Le Mans, we were working with Persia. We had to do this challenge of like completing these 15 tasks whilst we were there, the 24 hours. And one of them was like to meet, I think it was like a fan of a yeah, rival a team or something, something yeah. or something like that. And, and <laughs> literally we started chatting because is it your friend who, well, basically ran my wedding? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we were just making small talk and then Paul was like oh I've got an idea can you pretend like you're a fan of Supercars London and you're basically like what is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's beautiful green RS3 yeah I, and that generation is the because the new one's so intense what it's all mean? the money it's all the money and it's all the power and I'm a bit like, I like the new one it's but all the power it's the same as the old one is, it, is, it, is that no it's all not about 10 horsepower difference it's got well, the stage one map this has got a stage one map. Okay, yeah. well, we've just ruined all That's of my a fast one. there. So it's a really, really fast one. But I like the wheels. Anyway, let's move on. It's super nice. So thank you for, thank you for coming along, mate. Nice to see you again. Um, two cars that we're going to wrap things up with. A very nice grey 992 Targa. 
which is covered in rain. So it got really wet by the time. I know whose car that is. Where are you? Down here at the front. Absolute stunner. We had this conversation. Now the thing is, right? Let's get the room to back you up here because we had this chat last time. This lovely gentleman came to uh, to an event. We'll pass the microphone slowly forward. And he was saying, does he go for a 992 Targa or a Boxer Spider? Is what you were considering at the time, right? He went with the Targa. Great decision. Do we not all agree? Everyone look at my face. Do we not all agree? He should also get a spider. Yeah? Let's put our hands up if we all think he should get a spider. So his wife is here and has been saying he shouldn't, but now I think you have to understand. He should do. <laughs> there you go, mate. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Oh, Thank you. But you're happy with the car? Amazing car. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful car. How often do you get the roof down? Like, would you, again, no, it's raining right now, but would you do it on a cold, chilly morning or you keep it up most of the time? Yeah, if, as long as it's dry, I don't mind, but it okay. does get a bit drafty, but... It does get dry. I've never driven a target. On I've never driven a target. Just wheel on and yeah. just heat everything up and just take the roof off. His wife's got her hat on in preparation for him to put yeah. the roof yeah. on. Yeah. That's on the way back, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way back. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, uh, I, I yeah. think you've made a fantastic choice. I, you know, I'm a big fan of mine. Just need a spider now. Just need the spider, I agree. And it's apparently so the whole room, so yeah. you know, you can't deny him what he wants. Well, that, oh, wait, she's asking for the, the microphone. Watch out. 458 downstairs. I think that's really nice. <laughs> oh, she's pro the Ferrari. Also, <laughs> okay. Okay, go, go for the Ferrari. Uh, anyone from Podium? He's going to make a deposit in a moment. So, um, <laughs> And the final car that we'll include in this section is a beautiful E30. But is it actually an M3 or is it a sort of evocation of an M3? Ending play HDR, are you even here? Well, shout out to the guy at the cafe who's bought the beautiful... It's the beautiful best car here. <laughs> well, no wonder he's not on our event. Um, apologies if we didn't include the car. My wife does say, after this, feel free to come and grab us and, uh, and, and take us over to, to admire your, your car. Um, now, a couple of bits to talk about. Uh, staying on the BMW theme, both of us, independently this week, drove the new i5. Who's heard the radio advert or like the TV advert, like, the latest generation i5 with genius technology. Like, they're playing i5 adverts everywhere. This is a car oh, I feel like they're pushing the i5 hard. Yeah. So, I went to an actual BMW press event, which was like their electric, electric showcase, and had every electric product. It was quite cool. I saw the new Mini Electric, which I'm still a fan of. Where did you drive the car? Uh, Gatwick. Oh, you went back to Vines? Yeah, yeah. And you drove the M60? Yeah, the which fast was one. Same as me. So we both drove top level i5 M60, which is a circa £110,000 once spec'd up. Am I right on that? I'm looking at my BMW guys. Circa 110 pounds spec'd up. So, you know, probably, you know, cheaper than a Taycan, cheaper than some other super luxe EVs, but it's probably the top end of your EV saloon. Yeah. But we both really liked it, right? Hold on, do not do this to me. Wait, have I got a voice note? I'll find one. No, Go there's on. no voice what note. What are you backing out about no, now? No, no, it's not that we really liked it. It's that I, you really liked it. Shut, oh, I hate you so you ran, much. You rang me up. <laughs> you rang me up. You rang me up. And you missed my call. Yeah, so, so I you rang you back. It, and then that's when we spoke, right? And I said, I've seen your story that you're in an i5. You went, that's why I was calling. That's why I was calling you. To say, that's oh, I really like it. Go on, but no. now I change your mind. And no. Tell, pretend like you hated it. No, Go on. it's yeah. a very, very good car. Mm -hmm. Very, very good car. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think the, the, the best electric car I've driven with the Taycan... A lot, so you think it's as good as a Taycan? It's as good Taycan, as a, ta Taycan, as a yeah. Taycan, Taycan. Sure. But cheaper. Yep. Um, the, the, biggest, the biggest compliment I can probably give it is just, it was a really, it was just a good car. Agreed. But everything new is good now. <clears throat> the problem I have with it is that the, the petrol engine or the, the, the lower electric car will be just as good for £30,000 cheaper. So they're doing one petrol engine in the UK, right? Is it a 520 or 540? 520. So it's a little tiny petrol engine. Fine. No, no, I'm, hey, don't, don't, you're a little overexcited there. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, no, no, no. What <laughs> I'm saying is don't get ahead of yourself. Right. The i5, the new 5 it's just a lovely car. Mm. It's a lovely car, like all 5 series ever have Correct. been, should be. And when you're just pootling around and just enjoying it as a saloon, you're right. The... EV and the petrol will probably be very, very similar. Yeah. The M60 Larry one that we drove was a very good dynamic EV, but how often are you going to be driving it like that? Because surely, as we all know, once you start driving an EV hard, you're depleting range. Yeah. So aren't you just going to drive that car around as a commuter pretty casually, at which point, say, 30 grand, 40 grand and get the petrol car? You're then also going to be able to refuel quicker. Like... It's, this is the debate, right? If you're going to offer both a petrol and electric of the same model, 
it's it is a hard thing to justify. I well, think. I, ge- I genuinely come out of the car, and this is all seriousness. I genuinely come out of the car and thought to myself, would I have that car over my M3? Mm-hmm. Probably similar speed, very similar inside, apart from you in a three series instead of a five series, but all the techs all the same. It's newer tech than the i5. Yeah, Defin- but not, it's not tech. night and day, mate. It's still got the it's big an screen. It's evolution to, forward for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, steering wheel slightly different, and there's a few little bits and pieces. There's loads of advanced driving stuff. All the um, uh, uh, augmented reality, you know, with uh, yeah, the roundabouts and stuff. Yeah, for, yeah, I mean, I only drove it for half an hour, 40 minutes. You probably played with it more than me. I was just interested to see the driving experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not interested in all that tech crap. I just want to drive what the car. Sells cars, but go on. Yeah, well, it doesn't add that. That's yeah. true, yeah, but I just want to drive the car. Sure. You're a real driver, huh? N- Love manuals. No. <laughs> Flipping manuals. <laughs> How many fast cars have manuals in them now? Gordon Murray, 250. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think of that car? Go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> so uh, I walked away from it thinking, would I, would I have that i5 over my M3? And the answer is no, because it, it just, it, it's just the car. Yeah, yeah. It, but, the M3 but is just five more series special. Always, aren't five series just a great saloon? Like and M5's f- not. No, no. Hold on a sec. I said five series, not M5. I What's didn't say M5. That is a five series, no? Yeah, yeah. But that's an M product. Three series, M3, different thing. Yeah. So the five series, the, the, the standard five series, is just about being a great car. Yeah, but I was comparing it to performance, which is. But why I don't I- think an M60. Sorry, and I've forgotten all the names of all these stupid cars. The top i5 is not an M5 rival. It's an M product electric, but it's not an M5 rival. The three, like, oh, there's not an equivalent in anything else in the BMW range. There's not another M, no. So M5 and i5 M60s, that's not a... No, fair. But if you compare, if you compare my car, my mm-hmm. Touring, to, a, to an i5, in terms of price and performance, they're similar. That's why I compare Oh, fine. Them. Sorry, you're comparing it to an M3. Correct. Sorry, okay, fine. Sorry, because sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, yeah, what, yeah, that's okay. what I would... Sorry, yeah. That's what, you know, that's what, that's what I come out thinking. Fine. Would I swap this car, yeah. great car... Would I swap it for my current car? No, I wouldn't. Fine. Okay, no, fair enough. I, from from yeah. that point of view, because yeah, because we like more performance focused. And you're right. The mm. the i5 is, I would say, ninety percent just a great daily car. But it is performance focused. Of mate. course, it's bloody fast. It's bloody bloody fast. It's but really I just think, fast. as with it being an EV and all those elements, it's it's at its best, I think, in its daily usability. Yeah. I I think. I don't know if it makes sense in the full. Because what you know, how low are you going to drive an electric car? But uh, Larry, are you going to drive an M3? You still have it. I've seen you drive it pretty, Larry. Yep. Uh, um, anyway, uh, yeah, well, I hopefully going to spending a lot more time around an i5. BMW are very keen to lend me one for quite a big chunk of time, and I'm very keen to do so now that I've really? driven it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, they're, oh. they're offering to give me a big old chunky loan. Let's hope they don't renege on that. But uh, um, A little bit of a problem with the range. The range yeah. isn't very good on them, is it? Uh, I had an 80% charge with 185 miles. Yeah, so what it's, is it, 220? I think real world, you're 210, 220, like... In the cold, 170? Yeah. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, I think, you know, with all of these, the it's it's always hard to kind of work out exactly what you're going to be doing, and yeah. you don't want to have to start turning stuff off to extend your range, because if you're all in that a big, tech, you can't all use that it. tech, yeah, you can't use it. So, I don't know, but but I, that's why I want to live with one. That's why I want to live with them, because that is supposed to be a usable, dailyable saloon. By the all way, the tech that BMW are pushing really hard, and if actually... It, it's not as attractive or usable as the 520, then they've shot themselves in the foot a little bit. Yeah. By the way, there was a, <clears throat> just quickly, there was a boost button in this thing, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. M60. It's a paddle, like a gear shift paddle. I mean, flipping out, it scared the life out of me. Yeah. So I had it in sport, I pushed this boost button that's behind the steering wheel. Honestly, I thought I was in a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> it literally scared, I thought, flipping out, way too fast. Way too fast. Yeah. That's a crash or two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, remember when the Taycan went through the dealership window? I think that was a stunt, but it's going to be that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A cool yeah. car, though. Um, anyway, I want to move on. We talked about potentially an F-Type SVR with 11 miles. We turned out it had 11,000. Um, but in general, how do I phrase or ask this question? Delivery mileage cars, right? How often in the automotive world, especially on social media, like, do we see like delivery mileage McLaren F1? Oh my God, it's a delivery mileage Ferrari Enzo. When you hear delivery mileage, put your hands up if that like excites or intrigues you. Like, are you amazed by delivery mileage? Put your hands up. If you think what an absolute disaster and a shame, put your hands up. Yeah, the whole room. So that brings me on to RM Sotheby's upcoming auction. <laughs> um, so RM Sotheby's always do a London auction each year. Usually that's pretty amazing stuff. I went to one last year or two years ago, which had an incredible collection of Ferraris there. Um, beautiful 550 Barchetto I fell in love with a load of different stuff. 
This year, they've got seven... I oh know, uh, how many cars in the total thing? I can't see how many, but it's, a, it's a, coming across from a Singapore-based enthusiast who owns a whole load of cars that essentially are all delivery mileage. Let me read out some of these cars, because some of them you're like, wow, and then some of you are like, what? So let's kick off with one of three factory Testarossa Spiders. Cool. That's pretty unbelievable. Yep. Um, and that's got 570 kilometers on the odometer. Mm -hmm. Now that I understand, right? One of three. That's some collect, some huge Ferrari collector's going to buy that. They're never going to drive it. It's going to sit there. It's just like, well, Ferrari made these three spots. Like, I sort of half understand it's a piece of art. Same bloke who owns all these cars. Yeah, same bloke who owns all right. these cars is coming up together in one auction. So you're like, okay, like, I think we can accept delivery mileage, test of us a spider. Then we come on to, very interestingly, an XJ220. There's actually one just downstairs here at, at, at Podium. And let me just find the mileage. I'm scrolling. Give me two seconds because I've got to get past all the Ferraris first. And the XJ220 has 46 miles on the clock. From new. From new. This is like a brand new XJ220. Now, this I understand far less. I mean, because they were always a bit of a disaster car, like, it wasn't always... Now they're getting appreciated more and more, right? The values are starting to go up, but... I think that's a car to drive. Like, who's getting an XJ220 and just looking at it? Like, not him. Well, somebody. This guy. I mean, but this guy. Just, just, just you wait. Because, <laughs> like, okay, some of these big hitters, I do think they kind of make sense. But let's um, let's go back up to the Ferrari list because you're going to laugh at some of these. Uh, so, 550 Barcato, I mentioned, uh, 220 kilometers since new. So that's actually alongside the Challenge Stradale, 550 Barcato is one of my all-time uh, dreams. But 20, 220 kilometers since new. The problem is, right, if you buy one of these cars, you can't drive it. No. Unless you're a gazillionaire and you just don't care, you're going to be paying a premium because someone else hasn't driven it, and then you're going to sit in it and go, well, if I drive it, I'm going to lose a ton of money. What, like, what, what inspires this? But it gets better. It gets so much better. Um, uh, 599 GTB, not a GTO, just a GTB. 267 kilometres on the clock. Find me another one. Though. There won't be another one of them. But these two are the best in my mind. 2007 Ferrari F430 with 104 kilometers on the clock. It's not manual, it's not a Scuderia, it's just a standard F430, 104 kilometers. But the best one of them all, and this is up your street, Tony. 2010 Gen 1 Ferrari California with 79 kilometers on the clock. I, I bought them. Who's buying that car? Yeah. Like, which Ferrari collector sits there and goes, oh, you know what's missing from my collection? <laughs> A brand new Ferrari California. Well, maybe he had to buy that car to get something else. And he just thought, I thought oh, well, you know what, I'll just I'll leave just it. I'll just keep it, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Or maybe he forgot about it. Some I people had, forget about it. I had, well, he's got, I think this is the thing. I think he had so many cars, he probably just genuinely yeah, forgot. forgot yeah. But look, I, I mock and I laugh because I think it is... I think we struggle, right? As enthusiasts, we want to drive these cars. It's hard for us to imagine having amazing cars and not driving them. We forget that... Cars are now an asset class for investment. People all around the world are pumping money into vehicles because they're genuine investment opportunities and they mm. do tend to go up. Now, I can't imagine that Ferrari California is going to be, this guy's thinking, this is going to make me a ton of cash. But you never know. And I think the estimate on the car is, where we go, Hans, like, uh, blah, 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 100 to 150,000 pounds. And Gen 1 Californias tend to be 60. Yeah. So, you know. Actually, he's done all right there, and he's probably going to half get his money back. But there are some amazing cars in here. That that TR Spider for sure. There's a couple of other Testarossas in there, some with a few more miles. Um, XJ220 make a fortune. No? XJ220 will make a fortune. Oh. There's a standard 550 Maranello with 132 kilometers on the clock, which is insane. A 348 TS with 179 kilometers on the clock. Um, but there's some more used examples. There's a Dino. Um, there's an E-Type in there. Um, a Bentley Turbo R. Um, that's 741 kilometers. I mean, as I say, I think it's hard for us to justify because also, if you're buying a car, I spoke to Max Chilton about this actually. I think he was considering or he did buy a 599 GTO with delivery mileage. Mm. He said, All I want to do is drive the car, but I can't. I'm yeah. screwed. It was an investment piece. Now, if we were all sitting here and we had the money to invest in vehicles and you had the ability to buy a delivery mileage LaFerrari three years ago and you're now going to sell it today for a million pounds profit, hands up, wouldn't we all do that? Genius. A million pounds profit. You're going to do it. Yeah. So it's hard for us not because we're not in this world. I'll be fascinated to see the results of this. So uh, today, this, the auction is on at the weekend. So on Saturday, it must be the 4th of November. So uh, maybe we'll pick up on the results in a future episode. I, but you can watch along on the auction. If you're listening to this prize of the 4th of November, you can go and check it out. But. I, I actually think the 
best collectors are not enthusiasts because they buy with their head and not their heart. Well, you had a friend, right, who bought a Carrera GT who wasn't an enthusiast. It, I mean, he liked cars, but it was literally an a investment. And, and if you're investing... Never drove it. Delivery mileage is what you want, right? You yeah. want the lowest mileage example if you're actually investing. For sure, yeah. So it's... I don't think we can view these cars in the same way. It's the same as like, I don't get art. I'll just put my hands up to that. There's some amazing art here at the paddock. But like, I, I don't get the point of the yeah. Picasso. But there are people out there paying tens of millions of it's pounds for Picasso. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that does, it's a business at yeah. that point. And some of them aren't even into art, but they're just into money. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised over the years you haven't tried to dabble in a few investment grade cars. Well, it's, it's, it's hard for me to do it because it's me all about... <laughs> turning the money over you would take the first offer that was over what you paid basically of course yeah, yeah. because I just get myself into something else there's always another car is but there anything <clears> that you that has crossed your desk that you've thought because what did you tuck away at Cosworth and you were oh mate I had, I had Cosworth I had a 205 GTR I had Renault 5 turbos I had loads of stuff but you tried to do it with the 997 GT3 as well that point two you thought I'll have this for six months and see what happens when the market was flying yeah do you remember that white I car? Com- I completely remember it. But again, I, I like to drive my cars. Yeah. I had one of them V6 Clios as yeah. well. Um, I, the SLS Merc yeah. I had. Well, they would have been good news at one would point. Would have been good news now. But the thing is, like, what I got for that car 10 or 12 years ago, I've spun the money so many times. For me, it doesn't make too make much sense. 10 times sense. more. Not, not really. But what I'm saying is, is that it, it, it just makes more sense as, a, as a, some dealers... They'll sell like cheaper stuff. The the biggest independent dealer in the in the country, um, he's a car supermarket. He's got a wicked collection of private cars. Yeah. So, so everyone does it different. Some people invest in property. Everyone does it different. Has anyone here ever bought a car as a sort of speculated investment? Like bought a car, held it for five years, and tried to sell it? Anyone done that? Anyone had a car? It's hard. Uh, no, this dodgy. How'd that work out for you, mate? Yeah. Well, he bought it back. Yeah. <laughs> what about anyone selling a car that has then gone four times higher in value? Anyone wish that they'd hit... Okay, we've got someone at the back. Microphone, where's the microphone? Can we get the microphone? <laughs> Moving the microphone backwards. What was the car that you owned? It was the Mark 1 Golf GTI. Ah, and when did you sell it? In nine. 19- 2000. 2000. I've had it for five years, best car I've ever had. Okay. And if you'd kept it today, 40 grand, 50 grand? No. Probably 20. Probably 20 grand, okay. And you sold it for? Two. Yeah. <laughs> but it had just been too well. How would you have known? I mean, t- in 2000, I mean, oh, this mate. is the thing, right? Like, we can all kick ourselves. I meet so many F40 owners, oh, well, I sold an F40 for 200 grand. Yeah, but you didn't, at that time, that's what the value was. Yeah. It's hard to know, but as I say, that's what will well, be fascinating to see. I'm, I'm 100% most keen to see what the Gen 1 California does at that auction. Um, but I think that, you know, the 512, the, sorry, the spider, the TR spider is going to go for... But he's going to sell them as the a cash. package. So overall, he's going to be quids in, isn't he? Well, no, but because there's also, there's enough collectors out there. That's what I mean. Like yeah. someone will want a California because what it represents to the Ferrari story. Yeah. You know, we're sitting here mocking it, but there'll be some collector out there who'll pay all the money. There, there is genuinely, mate, there is genuinely people out there who've got so many cars. They don't know yeah. how many cars they've got. He's literally probably just forgot about that car. I am certain Jay Leno walks through his warehouse every now and again and goes, oh my God! Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, just yeah. has no clue. Yeah. Um, I think Shmi does the same, actually. Did you see that picture the other day of Shmi's museum? Shmuseum. And I was like, I didn't even know he had half these cars. I don't think he does. No, probably not. Comes home every day and goes, oh my God, they bought something else. <laughs> um, right, let's move on to the Q&A. Uh, so hopefully you've all prepared some juicy questions. We always like juicy questions, so kind of make them more aggressive as possible. Um, who's got the microphone at the moment? There we go. Who's got the first question? Oh, here we go. Let's move across here. Um, if it's, does anyone want to buy my BMW M135i? We will <laughs> it's not. mute your microphone. Uh, please. So, so this is a question for both of you. Um, based on the Figaro that you drove at the last live event at BMW. We, the, the Figaro that Tony uh, went for a passenger ride in, but go on. Would you rather drive that or the Lotus? Okay, so the From question is, so just, just in case you didn't listen to our last live event, someone, someone bought a Nissan Figaro that they were made to buy by their girlfriend. Um, and she bullied him. She bullied him, and then Tony went for a ride around the car park in it. So would you rather drive that somewhere or the Lotus? <laughs> Where's really? the road trip? Where's the road trip? Go on, make the road trip interesting. Scotland, North Coast 500. Lotus. I mean, I'm not stupid. Yeah, yeah. Lo- <laughs> Tesco's car park. The Figaro. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good question, though. I mean, I, I'm the same as Tony there, but yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, hands up. Uh, let's just, we'll move forward to the Lotus owner. <laughs> Dangerous, yeah. 
Really? Uh, of all the cars you've both never driven, what are you most desperate to drive, apart from the Evora, obviously? <laughs> Do you want me to go? What you think? Yeah, you go. Uh, Zonda. I, I, I've, I've, I've driven I, one of them. No, you haven't. My best mate had one. Of course, I've driven. You drove one. a Zonda. Oh, sorry, Zonda. I thought yeah. it meant Enzo. Uh, stupid man. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't know anything pre twenty fifteen. Um, no, because it sounds similar, doesn't it? If Zonda you are it? younger than forty, put your hands up. Of the. <laughs> 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 nice try, Tony. <laughs> Of those people, put your hands up if the Zonda is one of your kind of poster cars. Actually, only about half of you. I don't know what, I think generationally, whilst the Zonda has been renowned to being a, probably a bit crap, I just, for me, that's kind of a bit of an elusive car. Like, I've, it's just like, it's a Zonda. Like, you know, even Lewis Hamilton says it's a load of, load of crap and he had one, one of the best ones for a long time. And I don't think I will love the driving experience, but it's, it's just a poster car. Like a lot of people want to drive a Countach, Countach is one of the worst cars to drive, arguably in the world, until you're like really ragging its neck. But people don't care because it's a poster car, and for me, Zonda is one of those. There are lots of other ones that I could put on the list, but it's my, it's my go-to whenever in any of these DK engineerings or whoever say, like, what's on your list? Like, what can we try and help arrange for you? I'm like, Zonda. <laughs> um, the fact they're worth about 15 million means that the opportunities are becoming fewer and fewer and farther between. Go on, what have you thought of now? Valkyrie. Valkyrie. You know what? Someone laughed, but I actually don't think that's an impossible dream at the minute. I met another Valkyrie owner the other day. Like, lots of Valkyries are getting delivered, and to quite a few people that we know, and quite a few listeners. So, any Valkyrie owners out Please, there? can I drive one? You know what's interesting? On track. Um, I'll mention this story now. Apparently, there's a big software upgrade for that car, which transforms the car entirely. Mm. That's the word on the street, that the initial software was a bit glitchy. You get the big software upgrade, and the guy I met takes his daughter to school in it. Yeah. How unbelievable Does is he? that? Yeah. And he said the reason why is the lift system, there's uh, speed bumps on the driveway into the school, private school, obviously, Valkyrie. Um, the lift system is school. so quick that it's not embarrassing because he's got lots of other nice cars. And if he goes in something, it's like, and he has to wait and do all the speed. The Valkyrie goes up. Does it? Yeah, just rides all the speed bumps, drops his kid off, and off he yeah, goes. Yeah, very cool. Absolute hero. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, next question. There was someone just next to you. There we go. Given you're still looking for a classic car, Sam, mm -hmm. and you may or may not be looking to replace your 360. No. Would you ever consider a Koenig special Ferrari? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I thought you were going to say, would you get like a real classic replacement? No. Uh, would you get no. a car that works? The Koenig special really doesn't appeal to me. I like, I str I'm such a gimp for Ferrari and such a like, it's got to be OEM. I really dislike factory, factory cars. Um, I think the Koenig specials, I didn't take enough cocaine at any point in my life uh, to kind of go like, that thing looks amazing. Um, it's definitely of its era and it's got that kind of uh, vibe. Um, I also don't think, why I thought you were going with that question is I don't think I will replace the 360 with anything older than the 360. The hunt for a classic is a kind of ongoing thing. I've got one thing really in my mind. The 356, 356 is still the leading contention, but I now have the 360 for a place the big thing on my mind. And then I've got to be realistic that some point next year, the F-Pace SVR is going to go back to Jaguar, so I'm going to have to think about it. So there's always something else that I need to get before I get the classic. So at some point, I need to just shut up and put, put my money where my mouth is. But um, well, the Rome is not a classic. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Why do I do social media with this idiot? Thank you for the question, though. Uh, next up, somebody else. Let's come forward here. Red, red hoodie. So I'm going to start identifying people by clothing. So of all the cars that you've driven um, throughout your careers, what are your favourites for like the different engine types? So like three-cylinder, four-cylinder, and so on. I think we both agree on this, and don't why? we? V8. Yeah, V8. Yeah. I think we're both, we speak about it quite a lot, actually. V V8s are both of our favourites. Um, uh, you said, and why? So what, what's your reasoning for V8? I could never really put my finger on yeah. it, but yeah, I just always, if a mid-engine V8, probably just because of Ferrari, probably. I like the fact that you can have such variation of a V8. The C63 can be such a Larry Brutish thing. You can have Mustangs and things like that through to Speciales, yeah. through to, you know, Turbo, like whatever. What's the engine that you're most disappointed by regularly? Oh, that's a good question. Lotus. No. <laughs> I mean, you walked into that with the whole of Aura chat. What's the, him. what's the engine? What, well, a Lotus engine? I no, mean, uh, what, a Toyota V6? Yeah. No, but, okay, so a V6 in general, I was not asking a specific engine. I mean, oh. uh, of the question of four cylinders, V6, is V like, what one do you always think, oh, this can be great, and then whenever you get behind the wheel, you're a bit like, Meh. Oh, I'll tell you what is a, 
a, a really dead engine, the C43 engine, the Merc. So what's that? A the turbo V6. V6? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I That's la- a, that, what are you laughing? Have you got a C43? No. <laughs> we we <laughs> both oh, hate we engine, both man. hate the C43. Yeah. Okay, but you're still avoiding my question. Uh, what, Am I? Yeah, because I don't want a specific engine. I want an engine type. We both said we like V8. Oh, okay. So you've just mentioned two V6s. So I actually three think cylinder. I think your answer is a V6 actually. Three cylinder. You just mentioned two V6s then. Yep. Yeah, no, but because well, how many three cylinders do you go like? Oh, this is going to be lovely. Get in it and go. This is crap. You just don't like a three cylinder full stop. Yeah, I don't like a three cylinder full stop. Yeah. Okay, so and apart from the Jumeirah. Apart from the Jumeirah. Yeah. <laughs> You're regretting that you cancelled that now, aren't you? Um, I, I, V12. I'm going to come out and say it. Really? Every time I get in a V12, I think, ah, oh, bloody V12 is exciting. And then I'm always a bit like, eh. Apart from 599 GTO, F12 TDF, and all the big ones. <laughs> apart from. And there's something else that I'm thinking of. Probably the 812 with the knob exhaust. I, I, I think a Ferrari V12. <laughs> But, I mean, but a, Rol- a Rolls Royce V12 bores me. Yeah. Um, name a few others. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you like, like V12s then? No, I don't. I always think I'm going to like a V12 and I'm always disappointed by a V12. I'm never disappointed by a V8. V6s I'm indifferent about. But V12s I'm often disappointed with. I don't know why. Because they're smooth. They're very rarely like, ah! Yeah. I like something a bit edgy. And yeah. They're just so buttery smooth. Anyway, um, next question, uh, just next to you. Oh my God, we didn't do this. <gasps> did you talk to these guys? Briefly. No, oh talk, my God, yet. no, no, we're doing it now. Everyone's going to give these people a standing ovation because this is no joke. They have come from New York no. and Denver for this event. They landed on Friday, they're leaving on Sunday. Everyone, I mean, that is. Oh, wow. Twig, yes. twi- Twiggy just thought we were all applauding for her. She was like, what? what, 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 what? Um, I'm giving you a refund, by the so, way. So, yeah, so Tony, you weren't controversial that. enough, so I might need a refund from you. Yeah, you weren't, close, you weren't happy enough that they traveled yeah, so far. No. Um, so being from the US, I have to ask, how does it feel to have Jerry Seinfeld as a fan? That's and are it? there any plans to possibly do a video with him? Uh, Tony didn't know who Jerry Seinfeld was. <laughs> no, I do now. Well, like, well you do now. When yeah. I, thought, I, was, I, thought, I was like, mate. Jerry like watches my channel and she was like well, what does he do um, but uh, I don't actually know if Jerry listens to the podcast to be fair if Jerry if you listen to the podcast I'm also calling him Jerry like he's a good old friend of mine now uh, Mr. Seinfeld if you listen to the podcast um, well thank you and I'm so sorry that Tony's such an imbecile uh, so if you don't know about this and you don't know who Jerry Seinfeld is a uh, huge US comedian um, and I think arguably made the most from a TV show of any t- anyway let's not get into that Huge Porsche collector and a, a podcast a couple of years ago uh, said that he was a fan of Seen Through Glass, which was a real unbelievable moment for me. Twiggy, where are you going? Stay still. Sit down. Um, we have spoken through mm, third parties, but not directly through Spike. Um, I would love to do something with Jerry. Uh, I'd like to have him on the podcast so that he can tell Tony who he is. Um, no, I know who he is now. Of course you do now. Yeah. Um, I would also love to obviously do something with some of his cars. I mean, I would do anything. So, Jerry, if you are listening... Um, what, anything? Literally anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, ben L. I would mop his floors. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, like, in all seriousness, just get a coffee. We would fly to New York to come hang out. So, yes, uh, of course, we would love to do something with Jerry. Um, but he might not want to do anything with us. So, <laughs> we respect that. Um, uh, anything else? Come on, give us some other, another American question. Give us a Denver question. Come on, something. What's, what's an American car that we should experience? Oh, we've done that, mate. You hate American cars. All Americans hate American cars. Yeah, do, what's yeah. the most appealing thing about European car culture? Or what's a destination in Europe you want to go to? <laughs> I, haven't, uh, I haven't been to Monaco yet. Oh, no, that's get it. very cliche. Don't Super cliche. Twiggy, can you come back on your bed? I've not been to Monaco yet. Okay. Well, go to Monaco. Tony hates it, so um, you can have a nice time. If you've not been, it's cool, though, mate. I think so, for the yeah. first time. What yeah. do you drive in? You, you're in New York, so well, do you drive? I live in Manhattan, so yeah, I don't have You a don't car. drive at all. Uh, at home, my parents have an X5 and a Macan. So okay. I have some decent stuff to drive when I'm home. SUVs um, take over. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so nothing, nothing too sporty. Anything in Denver? His, his family has. You're both wearing Porsche merch, so I hope yeah. that yeah. someone's got a Porsche. Yeah. I, uh, daily at F-150, big American truck. Sick. Um, yeah, pretty cool. You love those. You love oh, I want to come and hang out with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the Porsche thing? You just love Porsche? Yeah, love okay. Porsche. My dad's got a C4. Um, 
Amazing. Is it the big dealership in Colorado Springs? Is that where the big dealership is? Yeah. So we're just like, like connecting about America now, guys. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Feel free to go and get a coffee. We'll be back in a second. Yeah. Um, they've got a big dealership there. Huh? Yeah, we went to the celebration. Uh, 75th, 75th anniversary, Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool place. We've got to do more US stuff next year. We should, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for the effort. Honestly, you're absolute heroes for coming. You're also insane. Like, I don't know what you're doing here, and you make jet lag look real easy. So well done. Uh, next question, please. Uh, we'll make our way back across the room. Hey, um, can you see a future where somebody makes an EV that has uh, some soul and is actually fun to drive? And who do you think that manufacturer could be? Well, he thinks he's found one already. I well, mean, there's a big debate coming out on my main channel. He's speaking about the Abarth 500e. Uh, but I've said it many times before, I think the, the Porsche Boxster EV, is, the Boxster E is going to be the one, I think. Mm. Do you think they'll have some soul in it, though? Because the Taycan, as good as it is, mate, it's not really... I mean, it is a Porsche, and it feels like a Porsche to drive, but it hasn't really got any soul. Okay, so to cannibalise my own video, this was my summary with Abarth, right? For an EV, and feel free to nod or get involved, but I think the way manufacturers are having to engineer in soul and character is in every way that doesn't do with the driving, right? Because fundamentally, at the moment, until the tech changes, it's really hard to make an EV engaging and soulful to drive for us. So I think engines are a big part of that, driving personality and character, uh, and also just, you know, the, the weight and the transfer and all of that kind of stuff gives a car its personality. So when you go to a battery, that is very hard to do. So they seem to be lots of almost gimmicks that are starting to come in. The boost paddle on the i5 being a prime example. The lights lighting up in a funny way that does a display. The fart noises in a Tesla. You know, all this kind of stuff. Mm. And Abarth have done it with that sound generator. You know, that It's fake. Some of it is going to work. Some of it is going to land. And we're going to go, you know what? And I, I think that sound generator actually works when you're dynamically driving the Abarth. I think it adds to the experience. But it's a gimmick. And there are some other gimmicks on that car and in other cars that you go, oh, it's just a bit fake. Like, it's a bit try-hard. Yeah. Porsche don't tend to do too much try-hard stuff because they're Porsche. We don't need to, like, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. We'll just make the car a little bit better. So I feel like with the Boxster, they're just going to make what they can make as a really great driver's car. And they're not going to do too many gimmicks. And I think they're going to have a good chance at doing it. I have to say, I do hear amazing things about that Lotus Avaya. Right. The big 2,000 yeah. horsepower. I do hear really good things about that. But I think it can... And Lotus... You can feel free to abuse me on text or WhatsApp afterwards. I think it can only do like six laps before it needs to be recharged. Mm. But people do say good things. I, I, I think it's near on impossible to engineer soul into a car, full stop. It's either got it or it hasn't. So, the, you know, there's lots of BMWs and Porsches that haven't got any soul. And then there's models that just naturally have. Mm. So I, I think it's really hard to engineer it in. And as well, like like you said, with the, with the EV cars, they will have certain gimmicks. But I think mean, it's a novelty, mate, and it'll, it'll wear off. And then after two months, you go, well, I'm bored of this now. And then you go into another one, and you think, well, that's all right. It's a novelty for another five minutes, and you're bored again. Well, again, I'm cannibalising my own video, but I turned off all the gimmicks in the Abba. Mm. I turned off the sound generator. I turned off the start, you start up jingle. Who knows about the start up jingle? Well, oh, my <laughs> God. Let's not get into that. No, um, I was intrigued with the, uh, the new Caterham that they showed at the yeah, Festival of Speed. That yeah. looked really, really nice, but I don't know whether it's going to drive. I think they can look nice. I think there's lots of nice looking mm. EVs coming to the market. They look great. And, uh, and I think it looks, personally, I think looks is a lot of personality. If it's exciting to walk up to, if it makes you go like, oh, yeah, cool. But... We're drivers, right? We're all car enthusiasts. We like to drive. Let's get the microphone over this way because I can see somebody desperate to jump into this chat. Um, he clearly works for Polestar. Um, <laughs> Does he? No, no, no. I don't know. But just, he's like, please, 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 please. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I th you know, that's part of it. And you're right. Caterham looks nice. Come on. I, I, uh, yeah, I wanted to partly respond. I've also got a question. So I've got a Taycan. Okay. Um, and I have the sound on. I have it in sports mode. I have it lowered. And I love it. And I think it drives like a Porsche. And it, it's brilliant. So I wanted to kind of respond because I think that I think that car has got soul, and and I and I've never looked at range, and I drive it like I want to drive it. Um, but my question was going to be: I'm considering when I change it to go to a um, Audi GT uh, e-tron GT Quattro. Um, what would your view be about that possible switch? Can I ask first? Is that because a lease is coming to an end that you are switching? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Oh, why? Same car. Same car. 
done him. He's going honestly. Is it always the same car? I mean, I, I think if anything, lesser. Because I, I hear great things about the Utron GT, and I think it would be like comparing Cayenne Turbo GT with RSQA. Like, like I think. I think you just go, oh, I kind of missed the Porsche, Porsche part of yeah, it. Do you cheers. know what I mean? I think um, it will be great to drive, I'm sure, but change it up. There's lot, since the Taycan, there's lots of newer tech out yeah. that I think would give you a, a different and better experience. So, um, cheers. Yeah, no, no, thank you for uh, the question. Let's move backwards again. We'll come firstly just to the middle row, to, to the man with the glasses to help the uh, microphone passes. Thanks so much. We'll do a couple more questions here, people. But yeah, here we go. Hi, guys. Um, so back to your BMW chat about the electric one. I have no experience about that. Never really been into BMWs, but appreciate them for what they are. I daily a Model 3 Tesla, uh, the dual motor one. I like the punch that it has for a day-to-day. -day. It's a tool. I see it as a tool. I don't really care about it. I use it as it is. But when I want a bit of a rag around going to work and back, I don't matter about the range depleting because I charge it at work. I can charge it at home. So for that, I can see the point of having a punchy EV ragging around. Just well, firstly, opinion. can I ask, do you, like we were arguing earlier about the 992 E92 thing, do you always have to clarify dual motor? No. Is that no. a Tesla thing? No, no. Okay. no, so. no, no. <laughs> I have the same thing with the Porsche. I have two Porsches. Oh, so fine, okay. I love, no, I no, but I, you know, in that community, it's like, oh, it's a dual motor. I never but clarify the fine. Porsche I have, no. Do, do you see the new Model 3, and does that appeal to you? I actually not sure about it. Interesting. And I don't know if I'm gonna get another Tesla. Get another Tesla. Oh. So <laughs> you've bigged it up. No, you don't want it. Well, uh, no, no. <laughs> but I, from just from the EV point of view. So Look. I wouldn't say I wouldn't get an EV. But the reason I got the EV to start with mainly was the tax benefits. Perfect. Yeah. The, it's what they're for. Yeah. And but now they're getting rid of the benefits in London. For sure. I mean, five. There's no. I think the fundamental truth with all EVs, as we all know, it all depends on your charging ability. If yeah. you can charge it regularly at work, at home, if your commute is 50 odd miles, EVs make fantastic sense if you can also take advantage of the, yeah. of the tax break. So from that point of view, I don't think any of us are knocking it. If, if, if Tony, if you had a high speed charger at home and a high speed charger at work and you could write it all off on the tax, you'd probably have a Taycan. I, I'd definitely, have, well, well, I'd probably have a Tesla. I'd probably honest. have a Tesla, it's, sure. It's, like, it's, the val it's the value for money thing. It's the value for money. a tool and for a work car. And if you're not having to money. worry about range, yeah. Fantastic. Like the BMW you just mentioned, the range on that compared to mine sounds terrible. And yeah, I've yeah, mine, yeah. I've had it three, it's three years old. But Tesla so it's lead tech the from three years ago. It's not brand new, but yeah. the range is still better. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but oh, no, hold on a sec. Hold, well, you're yeah, not paying us for this. <laughs> you can chat privately afterwards. You can chat because th this thing, you, you, the, the, the thing with all of these EVs, right, is you've got to always weigh up performance versus range and, yeah. and different models offer different things. Tesla are always going to be industry leading because they are 10 years ahead of everyone. Yeah. So that new Model 3 can supposedly do 400 miles. Let's see real world what it is. I don't think there are many others apart from f special fancy Mercedes that are claiming to get close to that. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, it, it's horses for different courses, but... And um, the infrastructure, mate. The and the infrastructure. The infrastructure is miles better. Another reason I got it. The yeah. fact yeah. that you can charge in both places means that an electric Boxster could really appeal to you or yeah. could really work. Or I, an Ionic 5N could really work for yeah. you. But for the major part of the world, um, yeah, because instant talk is fun. Instant, let's not deny, instant talk is fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you, for the, thank you for the point and the question. We'll just move across. Let's do the last two questions. So you and then the one just behind you. But Yeah, there's a glorious uh, 675 LT downstairs in there all carbon. Yeah. Um, so seeing that, um, you've obviously been not so uh, um, unpleasant about the LTs in the McLaren world. Is that something particular for your channel, maybe for views, you might go back to perhaps not a 675 or a 600? Just a sort of a long-term car. Um, I, I, I try not to buy cars for views because it never works, <laughs> and uh, and then you end up with a really expensive thing that you don't actually like or want. Um, ch when chasing I say the views, just because of your previous sort of for a story, uh, feet, yeah, story. Uh, we spent a lot of time about mm. running a a car like a BTG car to to talk through the experience, like a long term, like magazines do, and that maybe a McLaren would be interesting. Is you know, seventy five grand five seventy S's seem like unbelievable value. And we've thought, well, maybe we do it and run it for six months, talk you all through what it's actually like, and then try and sell it. And it's a kind of user experience. But then we go, do we want to buy a 75 grand McLaren? <laughs> no. and we, both, we both poop ourselves. <laughs> um, I always say, if you can get a McLaren that works, it's an unbelievable car. Yeah. And I think nowadays, they're back to making great products. Um, I think there's still some nervousness around Arturo, which they shouldn't be, because I do hear everyone having good experiences. I think 750S is going to be really interesting. Like, I'm so pro McLaren at the moment, 
but as a used vehicle, uh, would I leap into an old model? I, I think I'd still be too nervous. Mm. Uh, I mean, I did, and it's thanks to your channel. Ah. For the finance, not so much for the complimentary no, fine, okay. Uh, but so, you, were you on an LT? Uh, 12C. 12C, okay, fine. And it's been all right? Yeah, it's in the garage at the moment, which is why it's not here. <laughs> so, it's not all right. I in. <laughs> Can I ask which garage? Uh, v Engineering. V Engineering, because they are literally the only, mm. only real McLaren specialist, right? Uh, no, Forney Motorsport is where Forney? I normally get service, but they're a bit closer to me. The okay, engine. yeah, V Engineering kind of. Li- mm. I don't know, like, I think. I like, I like McLaren, so I'd want to tell a story. I just don't want the pain of the yeah. the bills and the selling. But yeah. good on you. There is a bit. Hopefully, we'll see you. another one. Yeah. <laughs> just behind you, there was a question, literally, and this will be our, our last question of the day. So it's a bit of a question for both of you. Um, we love V8s. Everyone loves a V8. What are the best V8s under forty grand? Like that's quite practical that you can use. C sixty three. Which which generation? The V8 one. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the turbo or the aspirator? No, the turbo car. Turbo car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, honestly, I still think that four litre turbo, I mean, it's a great engine. It's an unbelievable engine, that car. I'm not going to surprise you. I'm going to say an F Type R. I mean, I think, you know, that. that oh, that, you've died. Why have I died? It was a terrible car for 40 grand. <laughs> You're mad, mate. No. <laughs> you just said that to wind me up, and I'm not going to walk into it. You just did. No, two, two, arguably two of the best V8 sports coupes, I think. Those two. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it, it, unbelievable engines, lots of power, really usable, loads of character and personality in both. Yeah. Does, the, does the C63, does it need an exhaust, that engine, or it's all right as a stock? Pre-OPF. Yours pre-OPF. So a pre-OPF car can still sound pretty yeah. low. Because you want that for the personality. Down. So 2018. Pre-2018, yeah. Okay. yeah. That was my next question. Ah, oh, okay, what year? Yeah, well, F-type R's, you're having to look at like 2015, I think, I think for sub 40K probably. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, I, th- those would be our, our go-to, stick with our gut reactions, I guess. Yeah, and for efficiency and reliability, the Merc will be better overall. Oh, yeah, really oh get... no, those early F-types yeah. disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they sound great and you look like a boss. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, well, I guess that's a good way to wrap things up. We've gone a little bit over our usual time allocation. Thank you so much for all those questions. Sorry if we didn't answer any others, but you can grab us just afterwards as we make our way down to check out some cars. Hopefully it's not still raining. Um, but you've been an amazing audience. We've loved meeting you, especially you two nutters from America. Um, but all of you have made a great effort to come here, especially in some of the cars that you've driven. So give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> and for those of you listening and watching at home, we will see you next week from Australia. Upside down. Think of the nuts we're going to have in that audience. Oh my oh, God. Oh, check out my ute. You know, it's going to be a nightmare. We'll be kicked out instantly. So yes, those of you at home, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate it. <laughs>